Hi, welcome back to The Roundtable. I'm your host, Stephen, and today we, we're back with the second installment of Important Dates in Kistory, or the History of Kiss. The dates being May 19th, 1992, with the release of their studio album, Revenge, and May 18th, 1993, with the release of Alive 3. We'll start off with Revenge. Uh, Revenge was a return, most KISS fans would agree, it's a return to their hard rock roots. A lot of fans thought they stumbled with Crazy Nights and Hot in the Shade, especially with the Michael Bolton penned hit Forever. I think a lot of KISS fans who were into their rock face kind of went, what is happening here? They're with Michael Bolton. Something has gone wrong. To each their own. I thought it was a decent album, was okay. Not a masterpiece, but it was okay. Crazy Nights 2 had its moments. Maybe too poppy for some? Agreed. Revenge was the hard rock album you were looking for. And I think another thing most KISS fans would agree, in the 80s up to the early 90s, it was the Paul Stanley show. Gene Simmons kind of phoned in his songs, and you know, a lot of them weren't memorable, unfortunately. This is where the demon arose from the ashes and songs like spit thou shall not domino and unholy rank among some of his best uh, paul stanley had some good ones with heart of chrome tough love and uh, i personally thoroughly enjoyed the ballad every time i look at you i think it's better than forever and i think it's just as strong as beth if not stronger i think it's a great song this is a real band album they are a cohesive unit and it shows. Every They are firing an all-cylinder. This is the album I think we were hoping to get one day, and we finally got it. This may be the hardest-hitting album since Creatures of the Night. The only bad news is that we lost Eric Carr, their drummer, in the process. Although Eric Singer has been around for a long time and has proven his worth, we unfortunately lost it. Eric Carr in the process. That's one of the sad things. The album is dedicated to him. There is a track dedicated to Eric Carr on there as well. It's a drum solo on there. Great album. I think most KISS fans would agree that was a great time to be a KISS fan. It was back to their hard rock roots and um, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything negative you can say about that album. Maybe besides I didn't like Paralyzed and you can claim that the song Take It Off from Paul Stanley is a cheesy kind of song. But it's catchy as hell. It is catchy, but kind of corny at the same time. But that was Paul. He was always about the sex thing, right? So that's okay. He's he's the star child, you know, the lover. That's okay, you know. I got into it at times. So other than that, I have nothing to complain. It's a great time to be a Kiss fan. Great album. They were a cohesive unit on there. It's a real band effort. On the Revenge Tour, they decided to record their shows in Detroit, Cleveland, Indiana, arguably some of the biggest home bases of the KISS Army. And they released the Live 3, which is the first live album with the non-makeup era. I liked it. It's not as good as a Live 1 and 2. It does sound great. It was produced by Eddie Kramer, who did the first two albums, so it does sound impeccable. I think the musicianship is amazing on here. Like when I saw them for the Revenge tour, I thought the musicianship was better than even the Reunion tour. Some people might not like that, but I thought they were tighter with with Tommy Thayer and 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 Eric Singer. I thought they were a tighter unit. Alive Three. It's good. I think it's missing more of the... I mean, if this is your non-makeup era, then you should have put a few more tracks on there. I know they had to put Detroit Rock City, there's Deuce, they had to put some of the classics on there, but they could have put maybe Crazy Nights. You know, um, Tears Are Falling. You know, those are good songs on the non-makeup era. It would have been nice if they were represented on the Alive album. That's my quibble on there. I really enjoyed... I didn't think I would... But there's a rockier version of I Was Made For Loving You on that album. I liked it and I really liked watching you. I thought that was a great version. Uh, the rest is all great. It's good. Uh, Star Spangled Banner, one of the best versions of that. Bruce Kulik really did an amazing job. Liked it. Uh, Creatures of the Night is a great opening. Again, like I said, the only thing that I wish you would have put a couple of a couple more of the non-makeup here, but they really focused on, you know, 
revenge, which I understand. But it would have been nice to probably maybe have, you know, Crazy Nights on there. A rockier version of Crazy Nights and Tears Are Falling. I thought if it's the non-makeup era, be proud of it. Wear it on your sleeve, you know. A badge of honor. Other than that, they're two good releases. I think it was a great time to be a KISS fan. Although we were disappointed that these albums didn't go to multi-platinum status. But again, that was their label. I think their label was kind of pushing them to go into the reunion. I think they kind of saw no matter how good an album was, they never they never really stood behind them, I think. And I think they were it was we knew inevitably there would be the reunion. But if this was the last hurrah, I think Revenge and Alive 3 they went out with a bang. And that's that's my take on those important dates in history. You let me know, did you like Revenge? Did you like Alive 3? Hit that like button and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. This is Steven from the Around Table telling everybody to rock and roll night and party every day.